Okay, we're back here live in New York City for Strata Hadoop World 2012. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, to the events, and extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE.com. Join with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Oren Falkowitz, who's the co-founder and CEO of Squirrel, a new company that's really been built around the Accumulo project. We first found ab out about Squirrel uh, earlier this year. Uh, Oren came on the Cube. we Skyped Oren in, so right, welcome yeah. back to theCUBE, I yeah, guess. Thanks. Good yeah, to be here live. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> and we were talking at the time about the need for uh, security and big data. Uh, you, you guys uh, came out of the NSA and there's a lot of government use cases and you're commercializing now and you know working very closely with the, uh, the Apache community. So um, give us an update on where you're at. You just got funding, you moved to, to Boston, you moved That's to Cambridge, right, yeah. which is That's great. <laughs> you know, uh, we'd love to have more uh, folks in the East Coast and big data. So uh, again, welcome and just take us through uh, where you guys are at. Yeah, great, well thanks, thanks for having me. Um, you know, we, like you said, we've moved everyone uh, to Boston. It's been really exciting for us and uh, what's been more exciting is some of the uh, enthusiasm for Cumulo and for some of the key things that we think we're bringing to the Hadoop ecosystem, uh, primarily security and scalability and more user interactivity with, uh, with data. So it's been pretty good. I mean, particularly here at Hadoop World, we've noticed uh, real focus on uh, ecosystem building and uh, it's really exciting to work with many folks. And also uh, some great talks about how you go to the next stage from bring your data into a data warehouse to creating interactive analytics at, uh, at scale, so. Yeah, so when we were talking uh, at the Wikibon offices, we were Skyping in, we were on theCUBE there remotely, we went into some detail around you know, what you guys are doing around cell level security, we sort of defined what it is, so you guys can check that out, uh, that video out on uh, siliconangle.tv. Uh, also check out youtube.com slash siliconangle, all our videos are up there. But, um, and John, I know you had a deep dive with David Floyer out in the West Coast with some of the, squ the squirrel guys. So, you know, we've been talking about this, Oren, internally, and it, it really came to our attention at Oracle Open World when Larry Ellison said, we now have the world's first uh, uh, <laughs> multi-tenant database. Sure, now, of course, yeah. DB2's been multi-tenant for a while, but, you know, DB2, I guess, doesn't count. But it seems like with what, y what a, the Accumulo project has done, you've got a multi-tenant tenant database for the cloud that's open source, that's right, uh, yeah. that scales. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it should be really exciting. You know, the security is sometimes misconstrued to be a locking away, and we talk about it in terms of unlocking the power, and so there's some really exciting use cases where you can use these visibility fields for licensing and for bringing tens, if not hundreds of thousands of users together in one system to see uh, very disparate data sets that they may not want to bump up against. So we think that's pretty exciting. We think it's exciting for enterprises to be able to consolidate their data internally to see more and look across that. We also think it's exciting for enterprises to create intermediaries in their verticals and then even beyond that, groups like InfoChimps and others who are creating uh, data applications where they, they house data and they source data for data science or for, for other applications could be really good. Uh, good use. Why don't you actually, before we get into it, why don't you talk a little bit about the Accumulo project for, for those who aren't familiar with it, sure. ma and many aren't, but uh, set that up as well. Sure, so Accumulo was, uh, was initially designed by the National Security Agency starting in 2008, and it was designed to solve a, a number of problems. The first is to solve a scale problem where traditional data architectures couldn't solve uh, huge or massive data problems in the multi-petabyte level. It was designed to reduce administrative burdens, both in cost, the cost for administering those, and the cost for having to separate your data because of scalability limits, and then also in terms of uh, fracturing your data where you don't want every user to see every piece of data. And so it was designed to bring data together, reduce costs, and then to simultaneously allow for tens of thousands of users who are running a Google-style like analytics search uh, statistics, graph traversal, doing uh, intelligence analysis, uh, and simultaneously where you have data scientists, mathematicians, running new algorithms, testing new theories, new ideas against that data, creating summaries of it for analysts, and for them to meet in the middle and to really reform that traditional architecture. And so at the end of 2011, the government decided to release that to the Apache Open Source Foundation to grow the community to uh, extend the adoption and to really uh, let the project um, 
to take on a shape that it wouldn't have just solely being a government project. And our company formed uh, at the beginning of August uh, with many of the core members who developed that and have been working on top of it, developing applications and use cases for it uh, to bring it to healthcare, financial services, energy, education, e-discovery, uh, and so on. Now why why couldn't you just bolt on some of these features to uh, a, a more, I'll call it traditional <laughs> NoSQL database if there is such a, a word? Sure, so I think, it's, uh, I think it's two things. One, the security features are, uh, are embedded into the core architecture, which is, which is unique, right? Uh, it speaks to two things. It speaks to one, um, an appreciation for the seriousness of it. Uh, it's not, security in our case isn't something that comes in the next release. It's something that's at the forefront. So it's, uh, it's important from that level. And the second is that it's important to look at, to go back to 2008 and look at what some of the other adjacent technologies, what they were, right? Very nascent at that time. Uh, and to just bolt on security uh, would break a lot of backwards compatibility and would essentially uh, lose some of the performance designs that have been baked into Accumulo going forward. Yeah, our CTO David Flores said if you tried to do this with a traditional architecture, it would just bring it to its knees, essentially. And uh, so, you know, scale is a, is a key component <laughs> of this. Right? <laughs> you try to get it worded anyway. Yeah, okay, John, go ahead. No, no worries. Yeah, you know, I feel. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so security and analytics are hot. Obviously scale, the top three criteria is for, for the market right now. So yeah. like, the, that's what Dave and I look at, the market would say, people want scale, they want better analytics, that's really? top of mind, but security is kind of mandated and implied. Sure. So you guys built your s product Squirrel, S-Q-R-R-L, for the folks out there who want to know what it, you know, the, uh, the, the spelling, S-Q-R-R-L, um, from NSA, you guys had to build huge number of clusters before Hadoop was around, right? So you kind of had to do this from scratch, right? Is that true? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the, the key things, the maturity in the product is that it solved one of the most uh, extreme problems at scale in terms of security and then very diverse, rich analytic ecosystem. And so that gives, as for Squirrel, the company, our product, Acorn, it gives our customers a lot of uh, comfort and flexibility in applying it to their solutions, so yeah. So HBase is great for rights, right? So you're doing a lot of rights, HBase is great. What do you guys do? What's your product um, hang their hat on in terms? Is it reads, a lot of reads, random reads and writes? Or is it all rights like HBase? Could you explain uh, your your approach? Uh, sure. So I mean, Accumulo is designed to be successful at a number of different things. It's really supported a diverse set of analytics. So getting data ingested into the system very quickly, being able to scale that out, being able to isolate those data elements at a very fine level, and then supporting uh, incremental MapReduce through the iterator framework, being able to support low latency query, a uh, number of uh, indexing and partitioning schemes to take advantage of uh, the full analytic features going forward. So you guys are relatively new to the scene relative as a startup, right? So you just got funding. Yeah, sure. um, what's your take of the whole ecosystem? I mean, you're, you're not amateurs, you're not new to the game from, from an expertise standpoint, but as a company, your young company just formed, funded, going out to the into the wild, um, you're not geared up yet with the, all the product, and you're going to get customers now. You got some great, great traction from what we've been you know, talking about before you came on camera. <laughs> what's it like and what's your plan? Yeah, so I think one of the great things is that specialization is really key in this environment, that no one group can do it all themselves. And so we're fortunate to have a number of key partners in the Hadoop ecosystem, Hortonworks and MapR, and working with a number of other folks uh, as we go to market, as we launch our, you know, our enterprise product. So we think that what we bring, the maturity, the uniqueness to the security and the scalability, uh, through the database layer adds a lot of value. And we're eager to partner with many others who add additional value on the business intelligence front, folks like Tableau, Pentaho, the first folks uh, met up with today, had so, some really interesting things, uh, as well as uh, a number of other vendors from ETL, uh, you know, forward, so. So talk about like um, the different search options. I was just talking to Cloudera, uh, Jeff Hammerbacher, we were talking about what they're going to do with Cloud Solar and they got the new Impala uh, platform that they're promoting. Obviously real time is a pretty big deal for them. Um, you guys um, have played with Solar and Lucene. What, what do you, what's your take on the different search options? Yeah, I think customers you know, are looking for a variety of different types of search capabilities, both you know, traditional, faceted search, uh, 
uh, more advanced uh, search capabilities. And we'll have a lot more to announce in the beginning of the year when we uh, put our product out there. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to get you. <laughs> 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 trying to you get want to show a little leg on the cube, or <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm wearing jeans. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <It's not> possible. <laughs> So we've talked earlier about you know, some of the use cases. I mean, obviously government, financial services, you know, their their healthcare, there are others. Is the strategy of the company to get a foothold in those industries where you know people have the greatest appetite for security, and then expand out? Is it to stay narrow within those niches? Well, I think just take a step back. You know, we we see through our engagements with people across a number of verticals that there is a large appetite for security, either as a compliance mechanism or as a uh, licensing mechanism, one way to bring business units together. Uh, so for us, what we're looking for and where we're seeing the greatest amount of enthusiasm are folks who want more from big data, more than just uh, ETL and people who understand that this is an alchemy, right? It's not, um, it's not magic, right? There's a lot of hard work and there's a lot of core mature technologies that are needed to do that. So folks who have big data problems, who are suffering from keeping their data separate today, folks who have emerging big data problems but have immediate security concerns, and then vice versa, folks who just have performance problems but would benefit from having an additional security story on top of that. You know, we're working with all of them and uh, gaining a lot of good traction. H how, are, how would people solve this problem you know, uh, 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 in, in means other than Accumulo? Um, are they not solving it? Are they just having to work, you know, so I think what we're hard to figure this out, or <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think what we're seeing is people are going to a lot of exotic lengths to sort of yeah, work okay. around the edges, make a lot of hodgepodges, a lot of gymnastics going yeah, on. Yeah, a lot of there. gymnastics, and they're just losing uh, a lot of the efficiencies that they want, the simplicity that we provide, and then ultimately, uh, this has negative effects on uh, the analytic outcomes and the data-driven solutions that they're pushing. Yeah. So um, we've we've been we've been poking around a little bit about the need for security, and obviously it's there. We were at IOD this week, and of course it's IBM conference. IBM's very focused on security, sure. uh, has a strong security background, and, and I think there's definitely affirmation for what you're doing. I, I would also expect to see <laughs> a lot of competition in this space. Uh, have you seen it yet? Uh, do you expect to see it? Talk about that a little bit. Well, we hope, we hope that many people adopt you know, this type of security. We think it's critical, um, and we think that uh, you know, it's not a one-trick pony squirrel. Uh, security plus the scalability and the you know advanced real-time analytics you know will give us a competitive advantage going forward. So you know we're eager to to have many folks bring security in and take a serious look at it. We think that uh, it takes a lot of dedication, it takes a certain amount of seriousness, and uh, secondly, we think that it's not trivial to do it. And uh, talk is cheap in this area, and. Um, you know, we think that we have a good a good head start on that front. So, so you have a young CEO, very committed, <laughs> uh, passionate for what you're doing, knowledgeable. Um, talk about the the next hundred days. I mean, what's the plan? What's the the main you know, hundred, two hundred, whatever you know period you want to choose? What's the priorities? What's on Oren Falkowitz's to do list in the near term? <laughs> sure. So, uh, you know, first thing is that we're recruiting uh, more top engineers, and we're growing out the rest of our our team, both at a senior leadership level as well as uh, marketing and sales folks so we can get out there and meet with customers and solve their problems. And I think the second part of that is we're going to be delivering uh, an early version of our product in January and then making that generally available in the early part of Q2 uh, for uh, 2013 already. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it should be Clock pretty exciting. You're going to have a busy yeah, holiday season. Yeah, so we're, <laughs> we're busily working on that, but bringing on more top people, grow the team, and then start solving people's problems. So you're in Cambridge, Massachusetts, right? That's your <laughs> office? That's right, yeah. All right, so right, Cambridge, Massachusetts, not Boston. Not Dave. Is Cambridge is a little bit different. So, Dave, what's it like in Cambridge? What is it? You know, you know th there's, is a, there's, there's a there's a vibe a in Cambridge. It's a good vibe. In startups. <laughs> I, will I will tell you this: that uh, that the Boston area sort of went on the, the 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 biotech track, and there was a lot of you know attracting a lot of VC funding. Um, and it, I have to say, compared to you know Silicon Valley, it's been pretty still quiet. Light. Yeah, in, it's still like Boston. I mean, no, just in, in general, right? And now I'm not saying that there's any kind of uh, competition. Why try to <laughs> compete with Silicon Valley? It's a, it's, a, it's a vortex. But I will tell you this, there's a lot of great action happening in big data yeah. in Boston. Um, you know, you need a purpose. Boston as definitely as can't a, compare. They Boston definitely can't compare to Silicon Valley. Yeah, it and the, in, the, in the big picture, but try. in big data, we said on theCUBE, big Boston's a lot of legacy systems guys going back to the 80s. You know, like, like Cal Berkeley here in Silicon Valley, the, all the big data startups, you look at them, 
systems backgrounds. Yep, I think it's a great Networking point. guys, not the flashy so Web 2.0 company. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Boston transplant, right? I haven't been there for very long, but I, I'd say that I think that it's going to compete well for, for two key reasons. One, academic institutions are the best in the world, you know, Harvard, MIT, and I think second is that when you can bring the types of technology and computer science that we're bringing together with the life sciences industry that's already strong, like you mentioned, Dave, you're going to see some really interesting outcomes. And that's that's very unique, and that's not existent, I think, on the West Coast. Yeah, and, and we're going to be covering York, this. So. Uh, so in early November, it's going to be a launch at the Hack Reduce uh, event. We're oh, going cool. we're gonna, we're gonna to be there. We're going to have the cameras and figure that out. So we're going to cover these innovations. we got to cover the East Coast. we we got to cover it on the West Coast with, uh, with Silicon Angle. So go to wikibon.org, check out the research. Uh, we've got a couple of pieces actually on Silicon Angle as well uh, around this topic. Uh, the Accumulo Project Squirrel, very interesting trend. Uh, one that's going to just become of increasing importance, especially as Hadoop you know, gets more and more into the enterprise and you know, starts going uh, commercial grade. So, Oren, thanks very much for coming All on right, the group. It's always great yeah. seeing you. Yeah, I appreciate it, yeah. Uh, we'll be right back so. with our next guest after this short break here on siliconangle.com's The Cube.